Wow, would you look at that? The new audience score for the Proud Family, Loud and Prouder on Rotten Tomatoes says it all. While critically acclaimed, it became bombed by bad reviews because many consider this new season to be too woke. But what exactly is woke? I'm sure if you ask many people, there will be no solid definition. Does woke mean too bold with race issues? Too much black empowerment? Too in your face about this country's history? Hmm. Now, don't get me wrong, even as you watch my last three reviews I did on some of the most controversial episodes, I understand some of the criticisms for the season. Some moments can be cringy or try hard, and the writing could definitely use some polishing. But the fact remains that The Proud Family has always been this type of show. Remember the episode about Islamophobia, where Penny is reluctant to switch with the family because of her own prejudice, but realizes they are one and the same with just different traditions? When they all return home from dinner, the other family's house is vandalized with go back to your country and spray paint. Mind you, this was right after 9-11. With many other shows that geared towards younger audiences shied away from these topics, the Proud family handled them head on in their own way. Well, how about the episode where Penny got a concussion and dreamed about being back in the 1960s where there was segregation and racism towards black people and how they tied that together in the end. Oh, but wait, remember how Michael used to act and look in the original Proud family? Remember the episode about homophobia centered around his character and how he could have gotten revenge on his bullies, but in the end, he just gave them a taste of their own medicine? What other cartoons on Disney back in the day were really pushing out episodes like this? Shows like That's So Raven even had episodes about racism. Remember when the lady in the store hired Chelsea over Raven, when Raven was obviously the more qualified one? Come to find out, she didn't want to hire black people just because they were black. Did that make That's So Raven an anti-white show, even though she had a white best friend like Penny does with Zoe? I remember watching that back in the day and it having an impact on me because it spoke to something that actually happens. It made me aware at a young age. Iconic shows like Sesame Street have even took initiative to make episodes about tough topics some may have a hard time explaining to children. The Proud Family brings unexpected realism that some people just can't handle because it's in a form of animation. Because it's a cartoon with a huge demographic of younger kids, most would expect some, if not all, episodes to have silly premises and goofy antics, which some actually do. But as I said before, The Proud Family has always been a show about fighting against injustice, racism, homophobia, Islamophobia, and many more problems in society. And that was back in the early 2000s. However, now in 2022, in the 2023 years, they are just louder and prouder with it. Hence, the title of the reboot. Some of y'all thought that name was for fun? Hmm. A major reason this woke campaign against the Proud Family really started was because of this right here. Slaves built this country. They all shouted. I'm pretty sure many never even bothered to look at the entire episode anyway for the context of what prompted them to perform this. It seems like many who forgot about the show or never even knew it existed saw this clip on social media and jumped on the bandwagon to try to shut it down. Let's be honest, Disney has made many mistakes. I'm sure we could all agree on that, but the Proud Family reboot is not one of them. A big truth is black labor has been foundational to the growth of America and our economy. Enslaved people built the country's early infrastructure and produced lucrative commodities such as cotton and tobacco. Now, does that account for all of the economy and every bridge or building built in America? No, but it was still a major part at one point in time. The season finale, which I just reviewed, shows Penny and her crew protesting against a statue of a slave owner who also founded the town they live in. Many found issue in that, calling it, again, too woke, saying that it's ruining the show. But some white people who are regarded as American heroes and historical figures, I'm sure most of us learned about in middle school or high school history class, did used to own slaves or supported it. These same figures are honored with statues all across America. Sure, it was hundreds of years ago, but it still happened. The Proud Family producers and writers always took real and intense societal problems and made episodes about it. Now, if you would rather ignore that these problems happen or are still happening, that's on you. I'm just saying, a little 27 minute episode of an animated series is not going to create another civil war. If anything, it will bring more awareness to these issues. And how about the other subjects this season of The Proud Family brought awareness to? Like autism. From the comments on my video about the episode alone, it's obvious that many enjoyed and even related to that episode with BB's diagnosis. They felt seen, but of course, some had criticisms, which are valid. Nothing goes without criticisms, but exactly what is the root of those criticisms? A major criticism with the colorism episode is that Noah's choice for only liking white girls was a preference. What's wrong with the preference? So what? I'm Latino and I only like other Latinos. I got many comments like that, but my thing is, how are you not attracted to a whole race of people? Not every black person acts or looks the same way. That's only common sense, so I thought. 
The Proud Family has come under scrutiny in many ways before this reboot even came out. Dijonet was considered an animated caricature of a dark-skinned, ratchet black girl who was annoying, unreliable, and couldn't get a boy to like her back. There was even a point where almost 20,000 people signed a petition to cancel the reboot because of this. I mean, whoa. In the reboot, Dijonet has similar characteristics, but there are times where we see other sides to her, just like in the original, where we find out she loved poetry and was great at it. Dijonet may be a fictional character, but someone somewhere in the world know someone who Dijonet reminds them of. Someone multifaceted once you get through the surface level of their personality. The chain triplets from the original were given pretty offensive designs with the eyes and buck teeth, but in the reboot they look better than ever and we're still able to tell that they're Asian characters which really holds no weight to their inclusion in the show. Even Michael was given a new design which some took a strong disliking to, but for me it made sense considering his personality and how he fully embraces himself in the reboot. Like it or not, there are guys out there like Michael in the world which other kids can recognize it's a reality it's not going to change just because some people don't agree with it that's just life honestly many were angry with them for including an interracial couple of two dads last season saying how kids don't need to see this but again it's a reality and kids are a lot smarter than some adults give them credit for let's also take a look at some of the fun and uplifting episodes the proud family is known for many other things including its diversity celebrity guest stars and outlandish antics remember when penny was interested in kwa who was an asian character but his tradition prevented them from dating any further? Or how about when Mariah Carey popped out of nowhere looking for help with her sick monkey? <laughs> Lizzo even guest starred last season helping Penny gain confidence when she discovers her singing voice got really deep like rapper Tone Loke. What about Makeup Boy who is a play on James Charles and how ironically guy influencers are a huge part of the beauty industry now. Penny and her friends even made a deal with Al Roker and we saw them in college last season. In the movie they had an intense dance battle against some big head peanuts. All of these fun and interesting episodes but people want to boycott Disney and cancel the show over a few episodes which call out injustices they have always been. This season also had many fun episodes but I don't see people in an uproar about those because those are the safe episodes. The episodes that don't bring up race or history. The episodes that don't make people feel uncomfortable. Funny how that works right? So to answer the question, has the Proud Family become too woke? Nah. I think the Proud Family has just become louder and prouder like the new name states. There's a hyper realism and humor to the show that many refuse to digest or tolerate. Once again, the latest seasons do have valid criticisms and the writing on some episodes could have definitely went through a few more drafts. But all in all, The Proud Family has always been a show I enjoy and I hope they come back for season three with more interesting, relatable, and bold storylines. What are your thoughts on this whole woke discussion concerning The Proud Family? And what changes would y'all like to see in season three if we get one? Do you agree that the show is pushing a certain propaganda and making people feel a certain way or do you think that these issues still need to be discussed please leave your thoughts down below and don't forget to comment like subscribe and hit the notification bell thank you for watching and listening i'll see y'all in the next video